Hello, boxing aficionados. This is Stacy Dash, and welcome to NWJ, the world's most dangerous boxing page. At a time where truth is dangerous, J pulls no punches. So get your hands up and keep swinging. And don't forget, subscribe. Yo, welcome to NWJ, the world's most dangerous boxing platform. So what's new the day after the AJ Alexander Usyk fight? Well, I see a lot of fighters, um, you know, you had Tyson Fury making a video and he was taking shots at AJ saying um, AJ could have won the fight by... Um, you know, just going at Usyk heavy from the first round to the second round and, um, you know, just hitting him to the body. And he said, but he said, AJ can't do it. He's saying he didn't have courage. And if he goes hard for two rounds, he'll have to take the next four rounds off. So Tyson Fury is taking his shots. Um, Fury just better make sure he gets past Wilder before he starts uh, being too concerned with what just happened between AJ and Usyk because Usyk would give him problems too. Um, remember Cunningham Fury? Um, I like Tyson Fury, but remember Cunningham? He was a cruiserweight that knocked you down. You got up and finished him, but still he knocked you down. He was a former cruiserweight. So, I um, mean, Cunningham wouldn't be able to last, I don't know, maybe five rounds with Usyk. But, um, you know, uh, there's certain fighters out there that I won't even mention that try to take shots at AJ's just in poor taste. Um, I was listening to um, trainer James Ali Bashir, who I got the uh, honor to meet back at the at Lennox Lewis's last fight at the Staples Center against Vitaly Klitschko. And I met James Ali Bashir at the end of the fight. He used to train... Um, he used to work with the Klitschko's. He's in camp with the Klitschko's. Worked with uh, Lennox Lewis, and um, he even worked with uh, Usyk for a while. He said he told um, everybody that Usyk would be heavyweight champion of the world. Go check out his uh, interview he did on a on a boxing platform called EJ Boxing Live. Great interview with James Ali Bashir, and by listening to him, I can tell I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, James Ali Bashir was saying the same thing I was saying. AJ has to, he has to use his weight. And uh, even the guy EJ was talking about, you know, people telling him he needs to lose weight and all that. Some people, I guess they want AJ coming into the ring looking like Snoop Dogg. I mean, this is heavyweight boxing. And AJ lost one fight, you know, when he was heavily muscled. He lost one fight and everybody's telling him he needs to stop being who he was. So it's it's like um it's like he doesn't quite know what to do now sometimes you can see him thinking in the ring he's thinking should I be aggressive and I think he panics sometimes like when Usyk would let off a couple punches and he gets hit I guess he starts thinking you know I don't want to get knocked out again so he has to have a trainer come in and um you know like reset his thinking process James Ali Bashir was saying that um, Rob McCracken was, you know, he was just doing a lot of things wrong. And uh, he was saying, you know, this is a, I, he understands loyalty like he's, you know, he understands loyalty, but he was saying like, this is a business. You have to do what's best for your career. And um, Lennox Lewis was even saying, you know, something like when you're in school, each grade, you get a different teacher, you know, different level, different teacher. So I guess he's saying at this level, he needs to bring, AJ needs to bring somebody in that knows how to talk to a heavyweight and to just keep telling him to go, go in there and jab, especially when you see it's not working. I mean, you just need more than that. You have to know how to adjust in a fight and um, sure AJ tagged him, but uh, how much more effective would it have been if he used his weight? And I still say AJ should go back to the, the mid to upper 240s, maybe even 250. I mean, look how heavy Joe Joyce is. And, you know, he carries the weight well, and he's quite effective with it. I don't know who all these, everybody wants him to adjust his weight, you know. The ferocious AJ was the heavy AJ. <laughs>
and um, you just have to know how to use your weight. George Foreman even said that uh, AJ has too many voices in his corner and he doesn't know which one to listen to. He needs to be himself, which is a puncher. And, um, you know, you can't have your fighter in there thinking too much about what the opponent's going to do. I mean, you, you have to think about it to a point, but it's more reactionary than thinking, okay, now I need to keep my left foot out here. I need to, when he throws this, I got to come back with this. Just react. Keep calm and react. And um, even if Usyk out punches you, which he may, you have to just make your shots more telling. If he hits you with five pity pat shots, you hit him with five, you hit him with maybe just three hard shots that buckle his knees. You, you make each shot count, but you can't just sit there and play his game or that's a fight that's going to be, you know, very tiring and hard to win. But go, like I said, go check out the interview James Ali Bashir did with EJ Boxing Live. I mean, he was saying everything I was saying. I was like, I knew I, I was like, am I the only one not getting that AJ's not using his weight? You have a 19 pound advantage over Usyk. Use it. If you don't use it, it's a disadvantage, like I said before. And um, not to take anything away from Usyk, I mean, um, you know, even Malik Scott was defending uh, Anthony Joshua. He tweeted, if anybody messages me calling AJ a bum or, you know, he lost to a great fighter, if you come talking derogatory about AJ, I'm blocking you instantly. So I thought that was a class act of uh, Malik Scott. That was, you know... You know, fighters know what they're up against with Usyk. It's only these fanboys out here that, you know, want to try to put down AJ. I mean, AJ didn't get blown out by any means. It's just he has holes in his game, and Usyk exposed those holes. And he's going to have to bring in what James Ali Bashir said, not a trainer but a teacher. He needs a teacher. Look what happened with Lennox Lewis's career when he got rid of Pepe Correa and brought in Emmanuel Stewart. He may not have been as great if uh, he hadn't brought in Emmanuel Stewart. It's like Lewis said in his own words, they jailed. It was like they knew each other. He just met him and it felt like he knew him his whole life. So I know before I said loyalty is everything and he, you know, maybe keep Rob McCracken around. But I mean, his career comes first. I mean, you can still, you know, it's not like you hate the guy, but just say, you know, from here on out, I'm going to uh, go in a different direction and just see where it takes me. You know, no harsh feelings. I'm sure Rob McCracken will understand. He's a former fighter. It's just he wasn't a heavyweight, so he doesn't necessarily know what's going through a heavyweight's mind. Heavyweights think a lot different. Like Emmanuel Stewart was saying and EJ Live was talking about it, a lot of heavyweights don't have heart because – being a naturally big guy, a lot of people aren't going to want to fight you, so you're not tested. You just, you look the part, but you don't have it in here. You know, people see you're a big guy and they don't mess with you, but if you have to actually scrap, can you get down? So, Emmanuel Stewart knew that. EJ from EJ Boxing Live knew that. And uh, James Ali Bashir agreed with that. So, AJ's definitely got the heart. People questioning, you know, is he lost his hunger because he's, you know, rich. And no, he hasn't lost his hunger. He just met up with the guy that's been, what, 300 amateur fights and I think only lost 15. I mean, AJ hasn't had a long career. He didn't have a long boxing career. He's only been fighting since, what, I believe 2008. So, I mean, I've been boxing longer than that. I'm not professional, but I've been boxing longer than that. So, um, that started in what... uh like 2001, I believe. So, I mean, you got to listen to what the uh, the trainers say. And uh, a lot of these uh, AJ haters are out here, you know, gloating and stuff like that. But all the great fighters lost and came back. Um, people like to look at Floyd Mayweather and base everything off that. I'm watching that PBS uh, documentary series on Ali. And I thought I knew all there was to know about Ali, but it, it really gets uh, deep. Some stuff I thought, oh, that's, they kind of, I think some stuff was made up. You know, sometimes it seemed like they throw things in there to try to make him look bad. And, but um, Ali was just, those fighters in the 60s and 70s were tough. They were talking about our Ken Norton uh, 
broke Ali's jaw in the first or second round. Ali finished the fight. Every time Ken Norton hit him, he could feel his bone poke through his jaw. Kept fighting. Kept fighting. Ali was tough. Look at Joe Frazier. They were talking about he he was so hurt after his fight with Ali, he couldn't walk. He couldn't get out of bed. Um, some people just, you know, they had pretty much written um, written his career off, but he came back. He stayed in the hospital for a while. Ali didn't even go to the hospital or stay in the hospital. He said he didn't want to give Frazier the, uh, the uh, pleasure of seeing him in the hospital or something like that. But um, those dudes back there were then were tough. I mean, go back and look at George Foreman, Joe Frazier. They were talking about uh, Ali and Frazier. You know, they were hitting each other on the elbows, the hips, the the behind, everything. You know, they, they say you hit them on the belt line. If the referee don't see it, it's not a foul. <laughs> And, you know, I don't agree with cheating or nothing like that, but uh, fighting is rough. And uh, you you have to employ rough tactics with somebody like Usyk to slow him down. No head butts or nothing like that. But don't just hug or clinch when you get hurt. You know, you got to clinch. Let them feel your weight. Don't, you know, hold them and don't break up till the referee splits you up. Bend him down. Put your weight on his back. Little things like that go a long way. You know, as the fight carries on, the opponent will start to fill it in his legs. And um, I had a lot of sparring in the gym. Like I said, most of them were uh, lefty southpaws, so it was tricky. But uh, I guarantee each of them felt my weight when they fought me. Each of them told me, you know, one guy, I missed a punch. He said he could feel my power. And uh, this one guy who I thought was getting the better of me, he was even bigger than me. He was uh, six six or six seven, two sixty something. His name was Alex from the UK. I wish I could find him. I don't remember his last name. Dude was huge, and um, he told me he could feel my power. And I thought, wow, you could. I was like, <laughs> I didn't know I did anything. He was, I felt like he was roughing me up. That was my first time sparring, but. Um, there's just a lot of things you can do when you're the bigger guy. You have to make them feel your weight. And um, I know people throw out a little probing jab just to keep touching the opponent. But at some point, you got to push off and make them feel that. Your, your jab can make somebody quit. If you do it just right and push off on it, it'll feel like an overhand right. So I remember Lennox Lewis knocked down Tommy Morrison with a jab after he had uh, already broken him down. And Morrison was a tough fighter. That that left hook was vicious. Uh, go check out the the left hook he put on Razor Ruddick. Um, that was a great fight. But anyway, just a lot of people coming out the next day, giving their opinions about AJ class act for Malik Scott to say what he said. And then I know I started thinking though, I was like, was he saying that? So if Wilder loses to Fury, he'll say, "Don't talk anything." Fury was a master boxer, <laughs> but um. Uh, <laughs> Nah, I mean, you can't you can't um you can't say that though, you know. He he was defending AJ and that was a class act. So, what are your thoughts the next day? Who do you think that um that uh do you think AJ should bring in a new trainer or just add to it? Um seems like people say there's too many people talking in the corner, so maybe he should just bring in a new teacher. You know, stay friends with McCracken, but tell him I just got to go in a different direction right now. You know, this time of my career is really important. Um, I uh, I used to talk to Tommy Brooks on MySpace because we knew each other through a mutual friend, uh, Billy Moore, son of the great fighter Archie Moore. So uh, Archie Moore was telling me how Tommy Brooks really beat, um, uh, what is it? Not either Leon Spinks or Michael Spinks in the Olympic trials, but they gave it to either Michael or Leon. But um, I gave those two, I hooked them up so they could talk on the phone. But Tommy Brooks is just, he could bring in Tommy Brooks. That's a great trainer, trained Evander Holyfield, Mike Tyson. He knows how to talk to heavyweights and he don't take no mess. If a heavyweight don't want to work, he'll let them know like, hey, dude, you got to get to work. He does. He's not a yes man at all. James Ali Bashir, he's not a yes man at all. He said he tells his fighters when they should go to bed, what they should eat. So these are some OG trainers that know what they're talking about. And um, I don't know if Tommy Brooks is still training, but I think he would be a good fit for AJ. It's just he's got to bring in somebody who um, 
can tell AJ how to adjust and get the nerves out when AJ's kind of unsure, unsure of himself if he's facing a new style. I kind of got the feeling he felt like he was in there alone when he was fighting um, Music at some point. It seemed like he was trying to figure it out on his own instead of, you know, going to his corner, getting sound, solid advice. But that's just my take. Um, let me know if there's some trainers you guys think. I know some people were saying in my comments, maybe John Fury, Peter Fury, and that might be good, but I know they're not going to go help AJ when their boy uh, Tyson Fury will probably may be fighting him shortly. But uh, he just has to get a big guy in there. George Foreman, Lennox Lewis, Tommy Brooks, James Ali Bashir. These are great trainers. Great, great, great trainer Teachers. Um, James Ali Bashir is a teacher. Tommy Brooks, a teacher. A trainer is more of someone that just gives you your routine. You know, go jump rope for 20 minutes, go run three miles, spar. But a teacher can teach you the psychology of a fighter. He can tell you what the guy's thinking when you hit him with certain shots. He can tell you where his hand's going to be if you hit him with a left hook or, you know, if he faints, you know, what to do if he faints. You know, don't fall for it. Just keep your composure. A teacher teaches you how to calm down and so you don't panic in moments where a lot of fighters panic. When they're up against the ropes like this, they start to panic, especially if they've been stopped before. They say, oh, no, this is about to happen again, and you start to panic, and then you get caught with something and then get knocked out again, and you're like, oh, man, now what do I do with my career? But he's got to hire some teachers. He's just got to because, like I said, all the great fighters, um, they lost and came back. But in today's day and age, you lose about three or four fights, they'll be writing you off in no time. Um, but that's what I got to say about that. This is in WJ, the world's most dangerous boxing platform. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.